This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. And I'm Juan Gonzalez. Welcome to all of our listeners and viewers around the country and around the world. We begin today's show with shocking new revelations about the assassination of renowned Honduran indigenous environmental leader Berta Cáceres. On Tuesday, in Tegucigalpa, Honduras, a team of international lawyers released a new report that shows how the plot to murder Cáceres was months in the making and went up to the highest levels of the company whose hydroelectric dam project Cáceres and her indigenous Lenca community were protesting. The report's release celebrated the effort to push back against the brazen impunity with which the murder was carried out. Justicia Berta, justice for Berta, they chanted upon the report's release. In 1993, Berta Cáceres co-founded the National Council of Popular and Indigenous Organizations of Honduras, or COPIN. For years, the group faced death threats and repression as they stood up to mining and dam projects they said were destructive to their ancestral land. Then, on March 2, 2016, Cáceres was gunned down just before midnight in her hometown of La Esperanza. At the time of her death, she was organizing indigenous communities to resist the Aguazarca Dam on the Gualcarque River, saying it threatened to contaminate her community's water supply. Now, a team of five international lawyers have found evidence that the plot to kill Cáceres went up to the top of the Honduran energy company behind the dam, Desarrollos Energéticos, known as DESA. The lawyers were selected by Cáceres's daughter, Bertita Zuniga, and are independent of the Honduran government's ongoing official investigation. They examined some 40,000 pages of text messages and say the conversations are proof that the orders to threaten Coping and disrupt its protests came from DESA executives. The investigation also revealed DESA exercised control over security forces in the area, issuing directives and paying for police units' room, board and equipment. In their new report, the lawyers write, quote, "...the existing proof is conclusive regarding the participation of numerous state agents, high-ranking executives and employees of DESA in the planning, execution and cover-up of the assassination." For more, we go to Mexico City, where we're joined by Elizabeth Malkin. She's a reporter for The New York Times, has read the new report and details its findings in her article, Who Ordered Killing of Honduran Activists? Evidence of Broad Plot is Found. Elizabeth Malkin, welcome to Democracy Now! Talk about who did this report and what this broad plot is. Um, well, first of all, thanks very much for having me. Um, the report was compiled by five international lawyers um, from the United States, from Colombia, from Guatemala, um, who reviewed evidence that was given to the family of Berta Cáceres by the um, uh, Honduran public ministry. Uh, and. Uh, really combed through these te text messages. The text messages uh, were found um, on phones confiscated, seized by the Honduran uh, government as part of their investigation. Um, and uh, uh, it basically, there are three phones, one seized from the DESA headquarters and two from suspects. Um, these suspects are a... Um, an environmental manager for DESA and a former uh, uh, security um, uh, security uh, chief for DESA, who had worked for the company until 2015. And what these messages show is that the company um, executives, and those are not named in the report because they have not been indicted, uh, were in close contact with these two suspects. Um, uh, in, during uh, the, the months leading up to the murder uh, in March of 2016 and in the days afterwards. Um, so what this is uh, suggesting is that this was not the action of rogue employees and ex-employees. This was a much more concerted uh, action. Uh, and um, what the family hopes is that the, the, um, the report will push Honduran authorities to investigate further. 
And Elizabeth Machen, for those who are, have not followed the Berta Cáceres case, who is currently in custody uh, in relation to her murder, and what's the status of their uh, of their uh, of their arrests? Of their arrests, uh, they were arrested. Um, four people were arrested a couple of months after her murder, and then additional people were arrested. Uh, a, a few uh, weeks later, um, the uh, there are eight people in custody. Uh, the two that really stand out are uh, Sergio Orellano, who was um, the uh, company's um, environment and community manager, in effect, the person in charge of relations with the community, um, and uh, Douglas uh, Bustillo, who had been the um, uh, uh, the security manager for the company until uh, the summer of 2015. Another uh, military officer um, is also in custody. Um, and then the, the rest appear to be people uh, are sus the rest the, the remaining suspects appear to have been uh, people hired uh, to carry out the killing uh, based on the evidence um, in the report, which uh, details their movements um, as they uh, the days uh, before the murder now how the assassination. many how many texts are you talking about that were in the phones of, uh, of in the phones that were taken by the authorities but never dealt with for a year and a half is it something like 40,000 is where um, these were 40,000 pages of um, messages. Uh, they're WhatsApp conversations. Uh, WhatsApp is very widely used in Latin America. And um, what the uh, lawyers were able to do is they used a metadata company that was able to analyze these. It's an awful lot of material to go through. Um, and uh, the question is that um, the Honduran authorities have had this data themselves. Uh, whether they've been able or willing to analyze it is the question. Um, and what they've, uh, you know, why they haven't moved more aggressively to investigate other people in the company uh, who are on those messages. Uh, remember, those people are not named, so we don't know exactly who they are. Uh, but but they, uh, it is the job of the hunter and prosecutors to, to investigate. They're amazing. I mean, you quote from this new report about the plot to kill Berta Caceres in your story in The Times. You write, quote, an attempt to kill Ms. Caceres was planned for early February, but called off, the lawyer said. Mission aborted today, Mr. Bastia wrote to a DESA executive. Yesterday, we couldn't. Mr. Bastia returned to La Esperanza for several days at the end of February and arranged to meet with the same executive on March 2nd. Early on March 3rd, after Ms. Casades was killed, Mr. Bastillo called him again. After the killing, Mr. Rodriguez, the environment manager, forwarded details of the crime scene report that police had provided to one of the company's executives. Yes. Sergio Relax, another executive, wrote through WhatsApp a few days later, everything will come out OK, you'll see, don't panic, and pass that on to other people. I mean, these uh, quotes and texts and emails are incredibly damning. They are indeed. And, and, and so the question is why Honduran authorities haven't moved uh, more uh, aggressively to um, investigate. Uh, the way the case looks now, and it's going through very slowly through the courts, which is, is normal for Honduras, um, but the way the case looks now, you have one rogue employee, a one ex uh, 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 rogue employee, uh, just kind of acting on their own. And these texts show us that that's very difficult to accept and that more needs to be done. And I, I did speak with Berta's daughter, and she said that's what our hope is, that, you know, this will push authorities to move and investigate the company uh, more thoroughly and uh, determine who ordered this. It's very common in Latin America for the material authors of a crime to uh, be um, uh, uh, to, to be tried, but the intellectual authors are uh, somehow uh, uh, succeed in remaining at large. And the decision of the of the writers of the report to not name the executives that, that were participating in these text messages. Why why was that? 
Um, well, um, these are human rights investigators. They're not prosecutors. Uh, and um, so that they determined that it was not appropriate to release those names. So can you talk about the significance of Berta Caceres? Talk about her work and why the company may have wanted her dead. Um, this is what's very strange, and I was talking with uh, one of the investigators, one, one of the uh, lawyers about this. This was not a large dam. This was a dam being built on the Gualcarque River. Uh, more dams were planned. Um, but uh, from the beginning, um, the company was very determined to push forward uh, with this dam. Now, under international law in indigenous communities, there is a, a requirement to consult with the community before any project like that. And that is widely um, uh, ignored or simulated uh, across Latin America. Um, and uh, so this, I think, became a test case. Uh, and Berta was a, a very strong leader. The, the organization that she led and that her daughter now leads is called Copin. Um, and there was a great deal of violence against Copin before the murder. Uh, the protest by Copin had succeeded in um, driving away the construction company, a Chinese construction company. Um, and the, it had also forced DESA, the uh, dam developer, to move the dam to the other side of the river. Um, uh, the company uh, did have foreign funding from European development banks, from a Central American development bank. And so it became a kind of battle of wills. Um, in 2015, Berta Cáceres won the Goldman Prize, which is really the kind of Nobel Prize for grassroots environmental activists. And, and the hope was that it would protect her, um, and it didn't, obviously. Uh, so this, this case is really a sign of how far uh, companies are willing to go to push through um, projects like this. Uh, for Honduras, it's a sign. Um, it's 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 a it's a test case of impunity. Honduras is a country where uh, a very small number of people control large parts of the economy, and they have strong links to the government. Um, they're often in the government, and uh, the question is, uh, and and these economic actors uh, basically have been able to do what they want to do. Um, and the, the, the Berta's, uh, the Copin's resistance really was a sign that, no, you can't do exactly what you want to do. We will try to stop you. Um, and so this investigation is really a, case, a test case for whether this impunity should, should um, if there's a way to counteract this impunity. Um, in 2015, Hondurans marched in the streets across the country, not in Tegucigalpa only, to protest corruption and, and impunity. It was a massive outpouring. And um, they uh, demanded an international uh, panel, uh, similar to what Guatemala now has, uh, um, to inv investigate corruption and impunity. Um, well, uh, and, Elizabeth, uh, uh, Elizabeth Malcolm, I just wanted to ask you, in, in relationship to those mass protests, Honduras is scheduled to have elections uh, uh, later this month. I'm wondering your sense of whether uh, the Berta Cáceres case is going to have, uh, and what's the lack of resolution by the government in it, is going to have any impact uh, on those elections? Um, I'm, I don't think it will have a strong impact. Um, the uh, the current president Juan Orlando Hernandez is uh, leading. Um, he faces uh, a number of uh, candidates who oppose him, but the leading group is an alliance um, of of different parties. Um, and uh, I think that really the issues of corruption and poverty are those that predominate, and security, corruption, poverty, and and security. And so Berta Cáceres' case 
is part of that, but I don't think it's going to be the key uh, factor. I wanted to go to Berta Cáceres herself, back in 2013, speaking to Democracy Now! No, claro que no. Eh, la población hoy... The population today, those who've been in resistance or are from the Libre Party, are challenging the repressive apparatus, with the absence of the construction of real power from the communities. But now, these people are voting enthusiastically for the Libre Party, that we hope will be distinct from the other political parties. This scenario is playing out in all the regions of Honduras, in Zacata Grande, Garifuna communities, campesino sectors, women, feminists, artists, journalists, and indigenous communities. We all know how these people have been hard hit, especially the journalists, LGBTQ community, and indigenous communities. This is all part of what they've done to create a climate of fear. Here, there's a policy of the state to instill terror and political persecution. This is to punish the Honduran people so that people don't opt for the other way and look for changes to the political economic situation and the militarization. That was Berta Cáceres speaking uh, in 2013 to Democracy Now! One person who helped with this report is Miguel Ángel Urbina Martínez, a criminal justice expert from Guatemala and advisor on judicial reform. Um, we only have 30 seconds. Seconds, but Elizabeth Malkin, can you talk about the lessons to draw um, from Honduras now, as we see um, the same uh, kind of uh, fight for fighting impunity, the very powerful elite tied to the government and the murky military ties? Um, compared with Guatemala, uh, Guatemala has been really a model for the region, and Hondurans who protested uh, um, want that model. Uh, they have. Uh, there is another. Uh, there is a, a, a model. A, a group with a little less power, but they are beginning to make their voices uh, heard. This is the Masi. They have begun to investigate D Dessa. Um, and the uh, way it was able to win an, a lot of contracts. So this is perhaps the first crack for Honduras in um, in this impunity. And, um, and do you see uh, any you know, uh, was with, ARCA executives being arrested now that this information is out? I really couldn't say. Uh, certainly, there will be pressure for an investigation. Um, uh, but it's it's hard to tell whether the government is willing to move forward on this. Elizabeth Malkin, we thank you for being with us. A New York Times reporter will link to your piece, Who Ordered the Killing of Honduran Activist Berta Cáceres? Evidence of Broad Plot is Found. Elizabeth um, Malkin works for The New York Times. She writes from Mexico City. This is Democracy Now! We'll be back on why the San Juan mayor, Carmen Yulín Cruz, went to Washington to testify before Congress, and then the hearing was canceled. Stay with us.